Hi guys. Project is a fence. We're, in, we're putting up a vinyl fence here. And what I want to show you guys is something I've done here. But anyways, I need to be able to access the backyard. There's a boat back there. We're putting our pool back up and the city requires a fence around above ground pools. So anyways, I need to be able to get back here. So what I'm doing, I want to buy their fence kit. They want a hundred bucks for just the fence kit. And I'm not willing to spend that much. I think it's way overrated. But anyways, I'm using these six by six and they lied to you that's not really six by six. It's 68 inches by 65 inches. So when they say six foot wide, they're measuring from here to here. And when they say six foot tall, six foot high, I'm six foot tall and look, Okay, but anyways, so what I've done is I've taken one of the regular panels that go here and I put three hinges. These are storm door hinges from Lowe's, three inch storm door hinges. Put them here. Now I would not use the screws that original that they want you to use for all these brackets because this one broke off on me right here. But what I was using is long one inch self tapping screws into here and when you put your when you mount your hinge there's some flex to these hinges so you want to mount this hinge here level and you want to like take all of the play out of it so that when you load the door it's not going to fall down like this okay and then here I just put a regular gate latch it was just a couple bucks just like that and as you can see we have latch on the gate now from a distance you don't really know that there's a gate there and that was my goal and tonight we're gonna hang the other panel right here and one more panel there and we'll have it completed okay one of the things I did this isn't wide enough to drive that car won't even go through there but I can't pull a boat through here it's not wide enough but the way I have my backyard laid out is if I come through here and swing over here right up against there I can spin it get right up next to that tree and I can pull straight under that carport and there's no reason to have to back a boat in so anyways what I did was right here I wrapped this pole this one pole I wrapped it in a little bit of closed cell foam, or first I put a garbage bag over the pole and wrapped it with strapping or with um, packing tape, that clear pack packing tape, this stuff right here. Then I put some closed cell foam around it and I wrapped it again around the pole and I put the pole where I wanted it and I poured concrete all around the pole. I let it sit overnight and now I can grab a hold of this pole and it just comes right out of the ground. It is a little wobbly because of that and I did put some electrical tape right here because the concrete, I need to file it down or something because the concrete is going to abrade the pole a little bit eventually. But So I can open both gates, pull that center pole up and I can drive right through here. I'm completely level with no problems and this hinge is supporting that now inside of this pole to give it lateral strength when you open it you do need to purchase a strengthener I don't know what they call it they call it a insert but it's basically an I-beam aluminum I-beam and that's why you need self-tapping screws and what I do is I take that and I inserted it I set this pole in concrete first with dirt in the with dirt put it in the dirt pounded it down a little bit poured concrete all around it but not in the inside and once I got it where I needed it it is not the complete length
of the post, you will see that it is, what, two inches shy? So if you put it in there and put the post, put that T-bar or the T-post in there, I-beam, what are you going to call it, I-beam, inside that post, it would actually, it would come, it, it would come to like right there. And that wasn't going to work. So I wanted it to right here. So what I did was I raised it up, brought it up to right here, and took a C-clamp. Because if you can tell, there's a gap between here. There's a quarter inch gap. So I brought it over here, put a C-clamp, and clamped it down. And then I drilled a pilot hole for this one, put the screw in, in here, and then I took a level and made sure I took all the play out of it, and then I drilled the other two and put the self-tapping screws in there. Once that's complete and I've got this one, this one, and this one screwed into that I-beam, then I came back and I poured concrete down into the, the post. That way, it, that will take up any wobble left in there. But, but you got to have that I beam if you plan on opening the gate like that. Otherwise, these don't have a lot of structural integrity to be able to hold it. So that's where we're at now. And then I have two little or three little um, angle brackets that I'm going to put. Right here and right here. They're little shelf brackets is actually right there, right there. I'm going to paint them white. And so once this is closed, and then that will take any wind that we might have affecting it. And you can also put a lock here. And as you can see, it's impossible for me to reach over to grab that. And if you don't know it's there anyways, you're not going to attempt. So that was my idea. Instead of making an obvious gate where somebody could try and kick it down or break it or something. So that's where we're at now. This is the Freedom brand from Lowe's, Brighton, privacy panels. Um, and I did want individually screwed where we screw them in where this is one piece or uh, one panel instead of being the slats that snap together because I didn't think those would have any real support. So that's why I went with these kind of panels over the ones that actually went into the post because if they went into the post, how would I make a gate to it? Um, I mix all the concrete, half a bucket at a time, and a five-gallon bucket, and the same tool I use trapping um, to mix it and pour in there. I'm really, these posts, I've only used half a bag, a hole. Um, you want to drive, you want to dig a 10-inch diameter hole. One foot down, I want it straight, but at about one foot mark, you want it tapered out or belled all the way around. And that's where I want my concrete. And that way, when the ground, in the wintertime, when the ground freezes and heaves up like the ground will do, chances are the post isn't going to come, want to raise up out of the ground if it's in there beveled like that. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to build a fence and some concrete. Here you go. Make sure you give a thumbs up and subscribe. And click the bell for notifications. Okay guys, the tools you will need to assemble the gate on this vinyl fence. One of the most important things is you need one of these levels. I think it was $7. And see, I want to make sure all my poles are completely level. So you need one of those. Okay, you do need one of these for that's how I get my line straight for where it's going to come across. Okay, you need a bunch of shims to shim the gate with. And you, you see they're triangular shaped and as you push one up it's going to raise it. You need a short level but actually on 
the gate themselves. I want to make sure everything is perfectly level. I'm not really worried about the height as much as I am the level. I want everything perfectly level. And you do want to scoot it around because these things are not completely straight across. You need a C-count for holding the I-beam to the top of the post. If you're going to use the self-tapping screws, you're going to need a bit like that. These are the screws that came to hold the panel together. You're going to need three bits, um, drill bits to drill pilot holes for the small screws, three thirty seconds, and for the self-tapping screws, nine th nine sixty fourths. And for these, I believe that was a one eighth. So you need three drill bits. For the self-tapping screws, what I'm holding it into the I-beam is these, and they worked phenomenal. And that's the drill bit I used to drill a pilot hole for those. To hold the gate together from Lowe's, a gate latch, and the hinges, the gate is held on with screen door hinges, three inch screen door hinges. You need some Sharpies, of course you need a ruler, but that's everything you're going to need to assemble this fence, I do want to get the sides put together. The gate's going to go right here. So this gives me some lateral support for the weight coming this way. And now we're going to put our I-beam in there and hang the gate. And you'll need a, the final tightening I want to do by hand instead of a drill. And I've always loved this Craftsman screwdriver. Alright guys, we're going to take the I-beam once this is set in concrete. And I know I can cut this tree down. And we just... Very easily and slowly. Just like that. Now, after I set my hinges, so after I set my hinges, this one here didn't drop down as far as the other because I drove this down in the dirt. I'm going to put a C-clamp right here to hold this flush up and against tight because you can, as you can see, there's wobble in there. So I want a gap here and here so all the strength can be here. And I'm going to try and lift it up and have it go straight down. I'm going to put a C-clamp here to hold it. And we're going to set our hinges right here right here and down there and once I get the self-tapping screws in there I can release the hinge and once it's exactly where I want I'm going to mix up some runny concrete and I'm going to pour concrete down in there and that will set this and keep it from wobbling inside of there just like that. Also if you put a straight edge on some of these panels or posts, they're not exactly, some of them are, this one's bowed in, this one's bowed out. So you want to pick your post, which side is the straightest to put the hinge right there and just mark it with a Sharpie. And then you can take some rubbing alcohol after you're completed and that Sharpie will come right off. But I'm trying to maintain a straight level line from here all the way across the others set your I-beam properly you want to use a paint stick so you don't mar your finish here and put a C-clamp here and get this jammed up so there's no gap here see you're gonna have a gap over here I want this up flush just like that and the next step is we're gonna set the hinges with, uh, with one self tapping screw right there we're gonna take the play out of it and get it get the gate set just where we want it and then we're going to put the next one and then the bottom one. And when we get all, all of them where we want them, then we're going to pour some runny concrete down in here and probably half a bag down in mainly this channel, but a little bit of this channel and this channel. And that will lock it in place and it won't go anywhere. But we're trying to maintain this line all the way around. So we're going to I need to pull it up about a eight. That's how much drop we're going to have once the, once the hinges take a load right there. 
Okay guys, there you have it. Hinges are in. I do want, like to put a little shim spacer, jam it in there. I'm not going to take the C-clamp out until I got concrete down in there. Self-driving, self-tapping screws, put them in like that, and we know that the weight of this is going to pull down. So I put a, put a level right here. Make sure that's level, and then I want to cant this a tad bit to take because there's a little bit of wobble in these hinges. And first, I I drill that one, and I put in the screw that came with it in there. Drill this one, put the screw that came in there, and get them snug. Then I put these two in there, and then I remove those two screws and put the self drill uh, self tapping screw in there. Another one of the stainless steel ones there. But I want to use the screws that came with it, these here, because they countersink the screws that came in with the hinge because they countersink, okay? Both the ones that came with the fence aren't going to countersink, and the the self tapping screws see aren't going to countersink so there's going to be a lot of play in there but if I tighten them up with the screws that countersink into those holes into the recess there and there then I can place those two screws tighten them down pull these out re-drill them wider with the pilot with the widest bit and it's all in there now all we got to do is mount one of these brackets Right here, we are a tad bit high, but I don't think anyone's going to notice that. And we're going to mount one of these right here, and the bracket right there, just like that, and then we'll be done. So make sure you get your lines going across here. Okay guys, there's the completed hung gate. We have acceptable alignment right there. It's completely level. And we're completely level all the way down. One thing is if your posts are not completely level, as you can see, you can actually line the tips of them all up and you can actually go up and down a little bit. They do sell a PVC glue where you're supposed to glue these down. I don't recommend that because if it's anything like PVC pipe, it's a permanent fusion. And I'm just going to put some automotive RT, what is it, RTV silicone, like on two sides, and put it there. And these have been up here for day. It was 40 mile an hour wind the other day, and I really don't even see them coming up on their own. But anyways, you can vary them. But what I want to make sure is that it is level the entire length like that. And so they did change styles, the hinges on me, and I'm a little, or latches, I'm a little upset. Bought this at Lowe's three or four days ago, go back, and now it's a different, a different style hinge. But the only thing I have left to do is... I got some L brackets that I'm going to screw in right here, right here, and right there, which are going to match up right here, and I'm going to have to paint them white. And that will keep it, it'll keep this rattle. See, this one's held, doesn't work. But this new one, this new style, which I don't like, it's sitting there rattling something terrible. This one doesn't look, and this one does, because this one here is a real tight V, and this one here has a really wide V, and it's allowing all this play, and I'm not too pleased about that, but it is what it is. So the only thing we have left to do is pour our concrete down here. We're going to pour about a half a bag of car. We're going to make it sort of soupy at least at first, so it gets around the grooves and everything. But I'm going to keep this C-clamp in until we get 
pretty much a lot of concrete in there. Alright guys, this is the finished product. So we got all this, we got the cement poured in the post with the I-beam in it now. Anyways, what I was after was I did not want you to be able to tell there's a, a gate there from the street. Now if I would have put the Lowe's gate kit in, there would have been a black bracket right here with their stiffener that went there and I didn't want that. And from the street or driving by, I don't think you can tell that there's a gate there. Of course, I need to put some more caps on, but they're out of them right now. But anyways, this is the completed gate. We got a little bit more dirt work to do, but as you can see, this is what's holding it on this side, and we got our we got our three screen door hinges with self-tapping screws in there. And the other thing is. I'm six foot three and I cannot reach, when I reach over, it's to about there. I cannot reach and to get these. So the only way through this gate is back here. And when you open it up and I put just a tiny little bit of lean to it so that it self closes. I was thinking about putting springs on it, but I didn't. We were worried about it. See, it self closes. So, the problem with that is when I open the gate, we will have to bring something out here to hold it open. Otherwise, it's just going to close itself. So, there's our finished, finished fence. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the thumbs up. And the notification bell to get notifications for this.